All right, we're on to our last video of this uh, little presentation series. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, school finance, uh, kind of finance 101, which Kevin Mullen from Baird um, came and presented. So overall, the school tax levy has three uh, major arms of it. One, just our fund 10, our general fund, um, you know, revenue limit uh, that we were allowed to levy from our, our local um, school district population. Um, <clears throat> that comes from a couple of things. So we have a revenue limit imposed um, in the state. Hey, this is how much money you can ask per student. We are a low revenue limit, um, you know, ceiling school district, which means we get the smallest amount that any school district could get per student. Um, as our school district, different school districts have different numbers. Um, that's what we're allowed to ask for uh, in terms of tax. That is offset by our amount of state aid that we receive. Um, so we get state aid as well. You take, you know, that revenue limit number, you take out all the state aid, what we have left, um, you know, as well as some federal aids, you know, Esther, that gets a little more, um, you know, interesting in that. What's left is what then goes to the tax base. So last year we had $1.3 million um, for our general fund levy. Um, another section, which is very small, is our community service section. Um, section. Um, this pays for upkeep of things that are open to the community. So part of this goes to like our, our walking trails and maintaining those trails, um, the tannery for, um, you know, that, that baseball um, field and its community use. Uh, and that, that sense, um, some of taking care of the fitness center, uh, different components that we have, um, our, our community, um, our community, uh, now I can't think of the name of it, um, but Tanya Berger, she's gonna be mad at me that I didn't say uh, the, the correct name of it, uh, but our community programs that we are trying to get more into this coming year, I know we have a few different people coming to teach classes, providing those um, funds for those spaces. Uh, and then lastly is our referendum approved debt, which our last um, debt that we took out was in 2015, and it was predominantly for um, capital maintenance and some energy efficiencies. Um, so there were some lighting upgrades, some HVAC upgrades in certain um, spots across the district. Um, so we took out debt in 2015 for that. And last year we paid $773,000 um, of that debt. All of that adds up to the total tax levy, which is what um, then goes to our, our school district community members. So then how do we kind of get to this mill rate calculation? Overall, we have, I guess I have it on there. We have last year $312 million of total equalized value property. So this is how much property value is across the school district. And of that, we had $2.1 million that we asked for in terms of the levy. That leads us to a 6.73 uh, mill rate, which mill rate is that many dollars per thousand dollars of um, property value. Uh, and that would then be $673 per $100,000 home. That's just for the school. You get other pieces on there, um, like the village of Rib Lake or the township of Greenwood. Um, you get the Taylor County, um, there's NTC, all of that kind of adds up into your total bill. Now, one other thing to note is that from the school district side, um, that doesn't necessarily relate to assessment. Um, so I know certain uh, assessed values have gone up and down um, all across the place. I know um, one community has, you know, gotten letters saying, hey, your, your assessed value is going up and that would, uh, you know, affect mill rate, which it does. So from one standpoint, um, that's might be going to get a little confusing, but uh, basically as property value goes up, this, this dollar amount still stays the same. The mill rate is what's going to go down. Now, another thing to note is assessed isn't what the school district sees. We just see equalized value, and then we assign the equalized value to the municipality. So the village of Rib Lake might have X number of property value. So then that's um, you know one big lump sum to the village of Rib Lake, and the village of Rib Lake assigns um, that based upon then assessed values and so on. Uh, maybe this is a bigger video to really dive deep into that. So over the course of time, this is what mill rate has, has looked like. And a couple years prior to this, it was up in the $10 as well. Um, so every year we've seen this kind of slowly go down. Um, this is a function of one property values continuing to go up. Uh, and, you know, typically in the last few years, we have not seen, although this year we are seeing an increase in allowable, um, revenue limits in increasing. Um, but they, they didn't the past two school years. So without the revenue limit, um, being able to increase for inflation and property values going up, we've seen this kind of continue to, to slide down, um, to a pretty big level last year. So how do we figure out our debt limit? Uh, ultimately, we are allowed to borrow 10% of our equalized value. So 10% of 312 million would lead us to being able to borrow $31 million, um, which currently we still have a little bit of debt outstanding. 
So we would be able to borrow about $30.5 million if we wanted to, which is not what we're going for. So from here, what's, what's next? Well, one, I think the survey closes on October 2nd. So October 2nd, we'll, we'll be able to combine all this data. We'll get it presented back to the board and we'll figure out what do we want to do? Do we want to keep the plan as it is? Do we want to make some changes? And I'm sure there'll be changes that come out of it. Um, or do we want to scrap it and say, no, let's, let's start back uh, and start fresh and see where we got to go. And we're going to use the information we get here to inform that. That will then decide, okay, so what's the board resolution? What's the, the question ultimately that, that we're going to ask for from the public um, in January? And then it'll go to a referendum vote uh, in April 2024, if that is the case. Um, then depend, depending if that passes or fails, we would move into a design phase and then a project bidding uh, phase after we have the design squared away. And then we're, we're having construction that following spring. So we're like two springs away of, of actually breaking ground if everything um, you know, continues down this path. Um, if you do have any questions on any of this, feel free to reach out. You can send me an email, by the way, at tgrubs at riblake.k12.wi.us or call the district office. Um, I'll also try to put together a little walkthrough of our current facilities at the middle school and high school um, if you would like to see that as well. Thank you so much for watching.